to my channel, my name is Bonnie and this is Happy Space Create. I've got a story time video for you today, so find out what I've been getting up to this week. Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me again today. As I said, I have got a story time video for you today. It's a little bit different to what I usually post. I've never done a story time video before, but I felt like I really needed to share this story with you. It's not particularly sewing related, but I will be sharing with you what I wore um, during this event. Um, but I will skip all the jargon now and get straight to the point. So this week I had a wonderful day out um, with my friends and my other half, and we actually took a trip to Highclere Castle which is where they film the popular TV show Downton Abbey. Now, if you're not familiar with Downton Abbey, it is a um, dra period drama about lords and ladies of the manor. So it is the Crawley family and they are lords and ladies and it is all about the drama that goes on in their lives in high society. And it's filmed in the most beautiful stately home um, and it's actually called Highclere Castle and it is in a place called Newbury, which is about an hour and 45 minutes away from my house. So it was actually a birthday trip. My other half bought me some tickets to go for my birthday. I've wanted to go there for the longest time because I'm a huge fan of the TV show and they are actually releasing a, another movie this Christmas as well. So there are, there's already one Downton Abbey film and there's gonna be another one coming out at Christmas. Um, so we actually went along with my friends Daisy and Lewis so that was a really, really good day out. But I will tell you a little bit more about Highclere Castle in case you're interested in visiting yourself. So Highclere Castle is a stately home and is actually owned by Lord and Lady Carnarvon. So it has run in the Carnarvon family for quite a few years now. Now the Carnarvon family are quite good friends with the Queen, um, which is a little known fact, but actually um, their family ties do go way back quite a long time and the Carnarvon family used to work alongside the Queen looking after all of her horses. Um, so it is a very well known family that live there. Another reason why the Carnarvon family are so well known is because the previous generations of Carnarvons, I think it was Lord Carnarvon the Sixth was actually one of the um, discoverers of Tutankhamun's tomb. So he actually used to go out to Egypt and do lots of archaeological archaeological trips. And it was him and his colleagues that went out for one final time to explore Egypt, um, because thus far they hadn't really been finding um, much artefacts. They were sort of finding little bits here and there, but it wasn't really of much interest because they weren't really new artifacts. Um, but he was managed to convince to go back one more time and he had really ploughed a lot of money into exploring Egypt and the desert. Um, and he was kind of running out of money now, really. Um, so they went back one last time and on their final time, they discovered Tutankhamun's tomb, which, as you know, is super, super famous today. It is one of the first and only Egyptian tombs to have been found intact, meaning that it hadn't been destroyed or previously discovered. Everything was exactly how it was left um, when the Egyptians sealed it many, many moons ago. Um, so that's really, really exciting. And the reason why I tell you that story is because it actually does play a part into our trip today. Um, so going back a little bit as to why we're going to Downton Abbey, as I said, my other half treated me to this as a birthday trip, um, but I unfortunately had to celebrate two birthdays in lockdown, meaning that I haven't been able to do anything for my birthday for the last two years. Um, and before lockdown, my, I think my birthday was about a week after the English lockdown started, we actually had tickets to go to an Egyptian exhibition in London, um, where you could see all the stuff um, from Tutankhamun's tomb. Unfortunately, that didn't happen, and all the artefacts got shipped back to Cairo, which is rightfully where they belong. You know, it's not ours to actually have a look at, so I do believe that they are in the right place. Um, but I didn't get to see those artefacts, and I absolutely love Egyptian history. I find it really interesting. So inside Highclere Castle, which is where they filmed Downton Abbey, because the Carnarvon family have quite a strong link to Tutankhamun, 
underneath the building they actually have a Tutin Carmoon exhibition because um, upstairs in the house is obviously where the Lord and Ladies live but they no longer use the servants quarters anymore which is obviously what they would have used in the olden days back in like the 1920s they no longer have servants there anymore so downstairs has actually been turned into an Egyptian museum so for me it was like having two birthdays in one so we started off our day, uh, we arrived at High Clear Castle and it was a little bit overcast but we knew that it was meant to brighten up later in the day so we were still really excited. We hadn't got a picnic with us, we had actually got an afternoon tea planned for that afternoon. But first of all we started by looking through the house. It is an absolutely ginormous house, um, I don't know how many bedrooms it has but it's loads. The Carnarvon family actually still live in High Clear Castle although they do have a property off on the grounds which has more modern mod cons shall we say um, and they use Highclere Castle to entertain and to throw parties so occasionally they do stay inside the house which I found really interesting because as you were looking around the rooms you could see sort of like towels and toiletries and like knickknacks and I think that's really interesting because I actually wondered what it would be like to stay there in like a modern day age um, obviously I'm so used to seeing it on the TV show where it's set in the 19 sort of 20s 1930s and it's all very oldy worldy and they don't really have any power showers or corded phones or anything like that so we found it really interesting looking around the house and seeing that there was modern things inside the house like plug sockets and corded phones and things like that that they had obviously had to hide when they were filming the TV show so I like going around and spotting those things as I'm walking around, so that was really interesting. But inside, they have basically laid out the rooms exactly as what it was inside the TV show. So you work your way through the dining room, into the um, sort of games room and things like that, and you can see um, the powder room, the smoking room, all the different rooms that you see, the grand fireplace, it's all laid out exactly as it is in the TV show. So it was really like stepping inside the show and I absolutely loved it, it was really cool. But you were also learning a lot about the Carnarvon family as well, which I actually didn't know too much about until I went there. So it's really interesting to see how the Crawley family, who are the fictional family in the show, and the Carnarvon family might have been loosely based upon each other's lives because there were somewhat similarities as you go along. But once we'd looked through all the house we went downstairs to check out the Tutankhamun exhibition. So as I said Lord Carnarvon had previously discovered Tutankhamun's tomb. The stuff that we saw underneath in the exhibition were actually replicas because as I said they've all gone back to Cairo now which is precisely where they belong to keep them safe. A lot of them are religious or spiritual items, so it is important that they are returned back to their home where they're truly meant to be. Um, but yeah, it was really, really interesting. We saw all the gold gilded uh, sarcophaguses, and we saw lots of interesting tools that the Egyptians had made for themselves, like tweezers and earrings. But after we'd finished inside the exhibition, we went outside to enjoy our afternoon tea. So our afternoon tea was full of sandwiches and scones and cakes, which is obviously very British. Um, we also had a lovely cup of tea and a bottle of champagne. Now, High Clear Castle make their own champagne and their own gin. So there was little places on the um, grounds where you could buy a gin and tonic or some strawberries or a glass of champagne, which is absolutely, totally British of us. Um, but at the time we didn't want our champagne because we had had a lovely cup of tea with our sandwiches So we decided to save our champagne put it in our backpack and continue exploring the grounds So we went all around the, uh, the gardens. There was these beautiful manicured lawns really rare flowers that were around um, There were some beautiful ponds and some wildlife there as well um, and we actually discovered a little area called the secret garden which reminded me a lot of Alice in Wonderland it had those hedges that have been like trimmed into um, archways and things like that and beautiful rose gardens. Um, so yeah, after we had had a little look around at all the gardens, we had sort of, we had seen everything there was to see. Um, and our day was drawing down to a close a little bit. Um, but my other half decided that he had still had a bottle of champagne in his bag that he was waiting to drink. He said 
the champagne's getting warm, let's go and see if we can find a space to drink it. So off we walked into a sunny spot um, and found a little sunny area for us to drink our champagne. And as we settled into the sun and into the grass, he got down on one knee and he asked me to marry him, which was a really overwhelming and exciting moment. Of course, I said yes. We've been together for quite a while now, but it was completely unexpected. And it was so lovely to have my friend Daisy and Lewis there as well. Um, we had no idea it was coming. Even Daisy and Lewis had no idea. I think my friend Daisy clocked a couple of minutes before it happened and she decided to film the moment as well, which is lovely because I now have it on camera for me to look back at because to be honest, it happened so quickly. I actually didn't really remember like what had happened at the time because I just, it was just really overwhelming and he was talking and he was on one knee and I didn't really take it in. Um, so yeah, it's actually really lovely to be able to look back on those moments. And then obviously I was just grinning from ear to ear to the rest of the day. Um, and it was just an absolutely fantastic moment. It was such a spectacular area as well. So of course we're madly in love and um, yes, I can't wait to get married. So we've got lots of things to plan as well in the future. Um, but yeah, that was pretty much the day. After that had happened, our cheeks were aching because we've been laughing and crying. Um, and then we spent lots of time taking lots of pictures in the gardens as well to really cement that moment in time and remember like that, 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 that how we felt and remember that moment. Um, so yeah, and then after that, we decided to head to the gift shop as you do and we decided to treat ourselves to a bottle of um, High Clear Castle Gin. We haven't actually tried it yet but we're looking forward to celebrating with a glass of gin our new engagement as well. Um, but I just want to quickly tell you about what I wore to Downton Abbey because obviously it is a great uh, location, it's very sophisticated, it's very high class and obviously Downton Abbey is all about um, the 1920s sort of Gatsby era, but it does go through all the different decades as well. So me and my friend Daisy decided that we really wanted to dress up for the occasion um, because we felt like we should, you know, we're having an afternoon tea, we want to feel and look our best. So I decided to wear the Daphne dress by Sew This Pattern, which looks like this. This is a beautiful vintage tea dress. Um, I made it in this tropical fabric. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about the design. So as you can see, it has some gathered um, fabric under the bust here to give it a loose blousey fit at the top. Then it has a chunky waistband. It has some beautiful box pleats at the front as well. And of course, no dress is complete without pockets. On the back, it has a stunning little cutout detail here. And you can see that it just buttons over at the back. I decided to put an exposed zip in the back, a nice gold one. Um, I felt that that just gave it a really modern twist as well. Um, and the fabric that I've made it in is a tropical yellow print fabric that I actually got from Fabricland the longest time ago. This actually isn't a recent make for me. I made this dress a very long time ago. I think I actually made this dress around about the same time that I met my other half, so maybe about four years ago. It's definitely the best fitting dress that I've ever made. Um, and the fun thing that I did with this dress is I actually gave it fuchsia pink bias binding. Um, you can't see that when you're wearing it, but I just think it gives it a really fun touch. Um, so yeah, that was one of the first dresses that I made. And I'm super, super proud of that dress. And it holds a special place in my heart and even more so now I know that it was the dress that we got engaged in as well. It does really have a little special place right here for me. Um, so yeah, so that is the Daphne dress by Sew This Pattern. Sew This Pattern are an Australian brand. Um, she's a little indie designer and they actually have a shop in Australia where they do sewing lessons and things like that. So they don't really have a huge amount of patterns, but I discovered them on Instagram a very long time ago and I've got quite a few of their different patterns. And I just think the fit is fantastic. Each and every pattern that I've made fits me really well. The instructions are very easy, um, they're very well laid out. Um, they are all PDF patterns, which means you don't have to wait for them to arrive as well, so you can get stuck in straight away. The Daphne dress comes with a couple of expansion packs, so you can make it with different skirt types, and they also have an option to not have the cutout, just to have the full back. 
so you can download those things separately as well. So that's what I wore to my trip to Downton Abbey and that is my story time for today. I hope you enjoyed this story time, I've never done one before but I felt like it was really something that I had to share with you guys because you've become such a big part of our lives as well and I'm really grateful for you. Um, but if you want to see how the wedding plans come along in the future do click the subscribe button down below and if you have liked this video do give it a little thumbs up and I'm going to see you really, really soon for a sewing catch up and more sewing related content in the future. But for now, take care. Bye.